When looking at everything that the Cleveland Cavaliers have had to endure this early in the season, one could easily imagine this team being near the bottom of the team standings by now. I mean, every key player they have outside of Ricky Rubio have missed at least two games each, and Colin Sexton is literally out for the season as well. However, as I'm making this video, the Cavs have already played their first 28 regular season games, and the team currently ranks as the 5th best team in the Eastern Conference, while also having the NBA's 3rd best defensive rating, despite having faced the league toughest schedule up to this point. This Cavs team is literally on pace to make the playoffs once again and for sure, it's no coincidence that the tremendous turnaround and improvement of this team came with the arrival of monster rookie Evan Mobley who's currently pegged as the Rookie of the Year favorite after he was named the Eastern Conference Rookie of the Month for the first quarter of the season. Well, even prior to the draft, I've already actually made a video wherein I talked about why I think Evan Mobley would emerge as the best player from his draft class in a few years time, although not a lot of people actually agreed with my take. However, the guy is currently showing that his developmental curve is even well ahead of schedule as his 8.5 rebounds per game and 2 blocks per game leads all rookies while his 14 points per game average also ranks 4th best among all first year players. Also, the Cavs currently have a 16-12 and win-loss record, however, excluding the 4 games that he has missed due to injury, the Cavs have an 11-2 and record when Mobley blocks at least 2 shots, and they also have an 11-3 and record when Mobley grabs at least 9 rebounds and scores at least 15 points in a game. But how exactly is Evan Mobley impacting the Cleveland Cavaliers' success this much even as a rookie? That's what we'll be talking about in this video. So what's good guys, it's Real Balls here again, but before we move on, if you guys happen to enjoy this video, please make sure to hit that like button as it definitely helps the channel a lot. It only takes a second of your time but it definitely goes a long way and it would be much appreciated. So let's get to it. Nowadays, for obvious reasons related to the NBA shift to the space and pace type of game, you would rarely see teams play multiple 7-footers together on the floor. However, this hasn't been the case for the Cleveland Cavaliers as they have basically been riding their 3 big man lineup of Evan Mobley, Jared Allen, and Laurie Markkinen since the start of the season. Well, you really can't blame the Cavs for doing that because in offense, lineups which feature Mobley, Allen, and Markkinen together on the court have been outscoring opponents by 7.8 points per 100 possessions which ranks in the 84th percentile in the league. That's actually very good. But it's on the defensive end wherein this 3-man combination has really been much more dominant as lineups which feature Mobley, Allen, and Markkinen together on the court have allowed opponents to score only 98.4 points per 100 possessions which ranks in the 98th percentile in the entire NBA. This practically makes this huge Cavs front court the best 3-man defensive combination in the league so far this season. Well sure, doubting the defensive sustainability of this huge front court might be reasonable since Jarrett Allen is mostly a rim protector and Laurie Markkinen also isn't the best defender out there. But when you got a guy like Evan Mobley who actually looks programmed to defend any kind of shot from whichever area on the floor, it's really not that hard to see why this Cavs defense has been thriving and why it actually looks sustainable in the long run as well. I mean, so far this season, Mobley leads the entire NBA with 13.2 contested shots per game and the 16.8 defended field goal attempts per game that has been averaging also ranks as the 5th best mark in the entire league, ranking even slightly ahead of established big man defenders like Joel Embiid, DeAndre Ayton, and Anthony Davis. Further, his 2 blocks per game not only leads all rookies but also ranks 6th best in the entire league as well. I mean, as expected from a 7-foot specimen who's been known for his insane defense, Mobley is already an elite rim protector with his great timing and 7-foot 4 wingspan. But what's been more impressive so far I think is how his foot speed and length has allowed him to stay with supposedly quicker and more mobile guards and wings when they're trying to make their move in the perimeter. Just like in this clip, watch how Evan Mobley guards Tyler Harrow who's shooting 39% from deep this season. Mobley stays locked into him despite a series of dribble and drive motions, so Harrow eventually settles for the step back. Back jumper, but Mobley's insane size and presence just totally alters his shot, resulting in an air ball. And again here, watch Mobley guard Trey Young in an ISO possession. Trey uses some hang dribbles and behind the leg dribbles in order to lose Mobley, and just when he thought he's blown by him, watch Evan Mobley's long arms just walk the ball away from Trey Young's hands. 
So as you can see, what this guy's doing on the defensive end is just uncharacteristic of a 7-footer, especially for a rookie. He's able to defend ISOs from some really really good perimeter shot creators using a combination of his length, his timing, his foot speed, and his balance. As a result, Mobley is limiting opponents to just 0.7 points per isolation possession that he's defended, which puts him in the 94th percentile among all players who have defended at least 60 isolation plays this season. Also, because of Mobley's notoriety for altering all kinds of shots from almost anywhere on the floor, even the most elite offensive players have to think twice when they have the rookie in front of them. Just like in this clip, watch how Mobley picks up Devin Booker off the switch, notice how low he stays on defense and how he's almost mirroring Booker's movements. And even when D-Book decides to attack, watch how well Mobley slides his feet in the perimeter. This forces Booker to pass the ball to CP3, then when CP3 loses Garland off the shot fake, watch Mobley still get to him in just a split second to contest the jumper. And here, watch how Zach Levine dares to attack Mobley's defense from the top of the key. The defensive pressure alone causes Levine to lose the ball, still he recovers, goes for the pump fake but then Mobley still gets up right on time to block his shot. I mean this is just the kind of defensive impact that Mobley gives the Cavs which is definitely felt by the team as Cleveland forces opponents to score 8.8 .8 fewer points per game whenever Mobley is on the floor. This point differential ranks in the 87th percentile among all players classified as big men in the entire NBA. But here's the thing, Darius Garland's size and Laurie Markkinen's foot speed still gives the Cavs problems in terms of limiting opposing players from getting to the paint. Cleveland's opponents are still taking 30.5% of all their total shot attempts within 5 feet of the basket, which is the second highest mark in the league. However, this doesn't seem to bother the Cavs at all, cause I mean, even if an opponent is able to get past Laurie Markkinen in the perimeter for example, there's almost always going to be at least another 7-footer waiting to protect the rim for the Cavs. Just like in this clip, with Markkinen Guarding Paul George, we know it's only gonna be a matter of time before PG gets past him, but when that happens, Jared Allen is already right there waiting as both him and Markkinen end up challenging PG's interior shot attempt. And again here, watch how Jared Allen defends the quicker DeAnthony Melton in the perimeter. Even if Melton somehow manages to sneak past Allen, it doesn't really matter as Evan Mobley is waiting right underneath the basket to provide the well-timed help side block. These types of plays show us why, despite allowing opponents to take tons of shots at the paint, the Cavs are also limiting the same opponents to only 55% shooting at the rim, which ranks as the best percentage in the NBA this season. And definitely, Evan Mobley's defensive versatility has been a huge part as to why the Cavs have been a top tier defensive team this season, even while playing their unconventional big front court a huge chunk of the time. But yeah, speaking of versatility, everyone knew that defense was going to be Mobley's calling card right as he entered the league, but the thing is, he has also been very productive on the offensive end as well, as Mobley's 14 points per game average also currently ranks 4th best among all rookies. I mean, not that it's really surprising, but right off the bat, Mobley has been a constant lob threat and a consistent finisher out of Darius Garland and Ricky Rubio's interior passes. He has also been able to establish his signature semi-hook shot in the paint. As a result, Mobley's 8.7 points in the paint per game not only leads all rookies, but also ranks as the 36th best mark in the entire league. Well, obviously, Mobley will take most of his shot attempts right around the paint, but there's a reason why he has been able to thrive next to another big man like Jarrett Allen, whose offensive game is also mainly centered around the basket as well. This is because Mobley is also a very intuitive and creative passer who has been leveraging his own shot making ability in order to find Jarrett Allen around the rim. Just like in this clip, after grabbing the rebound of his own miss, Darius Garland finds Mobley in the corner. Then as Mobley decides to attack, he sees Rudy Gobert ready to meet him, so he instead dishes out the beautiful no-look pass to the open Jared Allen for the easy dunk. And again here, out of the short roll action, Jared Allen finds Mobley on the corner. Mobley then attacks Scotty Barnes' closeout, but with a second defender meeting him mid-air, he again delivers the one-handed dime back to Jared Allen for the easy finish. But overall, despite all the unreal things that Mobley has been doing as a rookie, he actually isn't the only reason for the Cavs' resurgence this season out of all their young core pieces. Darius Garland is currently playing like an all-star, Jared Allen is quietly having a career season, Isaac Okoro is starting to make his mark in the starting lineup, and even Laurie Markkanen is also starting to get his outside shot going. However, it's worth noting that even as a rookie, Evan Mobley's 8.7 net rating is already the second best in the team next to Garland, and out of all rookies who are averaging at least 20 minutes of playing time per game, Mobley is currently the only one playing for an above 500 team who's on pace to make the playoffs. All of these things tell us that Evan Mobley is already changing the Cavs in just his first season, so who knows how much further he can take this team with a couple more years of playing experience. 
So what do you guys think is Evan Mobley's realistic ceiling? Feel free to drop your thoughts in the comments section below. And again, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing as well. Again, this is Real Balls, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.